When we change from the pool to open water, the main thing, it seems obvious that there's no walls. But the big problem with no walls is you don't really have that push off every time. And every time you push off the wall, it's like a restart, it's a reset. When you're out there in the open water, you just have you and you've got to be able to reset yourself. So I'm Chris, Chris Bryan from Swim Tribe. I was an international open water swimmer for Ireland. Before that, I was a, a pool swimmer. And then I said I'd try my hand at the new Olympic sport of open water swimming. Um, and it's something that just clicked with me. So often we talk about in open water, it's all about the balance on the water, right? You have your body, it's almost this pivot point, right? And anytime your legs are sinking, how do you get them back up? So that involves some awareness, it involves relaxation. So it is different to the pool, but the skills really do apply. It's just a slightly different type of awareness. Because again, you don't have those walls, it really focuses on your actual stroke dynamics. And every action has an opposite reaction. Again, I like to think about the body as your boat and you want to balance right on the surface. But when you start swimming, what happens? You'll find people knock themselves off balance. Life would be great if our lungs, our big balloons that keep us buoyant were right in the middle of our body, our center of mass, but they're not. They're in our chest leading to our seesaw falling down, our legs getting a bit deeper. So what do we want to do? We want to enter, but then we want to choose what kind of gear, what kind of pressure we have. If we want to find this big heavy tenth gear, we don't go tenth gear, tenth gear, tenth gear. We enter, we reach, and we build, we feel the pressure. First gear, second, third, fourth, fifth, then tenth. When your hand, forearm pointing backwards, you really add the power. You're building pressure. It's adaptable, it's your body, right? You're not a wind-up swimmer that all of a sudden only has one gear and you go. But it's all about adaptability. And open water is about adapting, stroke to stroke. You don't need to be at max all the time. It's very inefficient, especially if you're a triathlete. You're gonna get on the bike and then you're gonna swim. You gotta learn to just do enough. So maybe tenth gear isn't the best swimming. Maybe it's better to find third gear. You go one, two, three, you could find more, but that's enough. Make sure you're pushing it under your shoulder, past your hip. Pressure in the right time points. That helps going forward, and most importantly, keep your body high on the water. We've got to stay oriented in the open water. We do that by sighting. You need a sight very, very often, right? Every six stroke is what I'd recommend. But people say you're gonna waste so much energy looking your head up every six stroke. If you're wasting energy, your technique is wrong. This is why it's a six stroke. You want to sight when you have least resistance and stay balanced. So as you enter your arm, you're going to stay long. Your legs are out. That's when as your hand enters, you look up. Don't breathe and your body wants to, right? And don't push down, waste, enjoy your sight. So as you finish on that side, you're going to drop to a breath. Oh. You have to tell your body, don't worry. You don't need to breathe right now, buddy. The breath is coming, right? What I recommend is that you breathe on the right side, you sight on your right hand. It allows you for an extra long sight. So as you enter straight away, your head pops up like a jack in the box, like pressing that button. Look up, don't breathe, and just stay. Use that hand to just push, glide. I have this full power pull to pull, push and breathe, and back to my swimming. If you do a water polo sight, it becomes exhausting. My shoulders are even burning here on land. You also don't really want to sight with a very long neck. You kind of want to think turtle in a shell sort of thing, right? Keeping your neck quite short, almost like butterfly sometimes. You don't want to think about lifting your head. So push your face forward with a really nice little note to make sure you stay nice and low. Swimming in open water feels amazing, but getting in and getting out can be the hardest part. When you come out of the water, you're tired, cold, and just want to get warm as fast as possible. And that's where dry robe comes in. It's fast drying, breathable, and lets you change wherever you are while protecting you from the cold and wind. Think of it as a towel and a changing room all in one. Now you don't have to worry about doing the awkward deck change while holding a towel. Dry robe works great with swimsuits and wetsuits, so whether you're finished a swim at the pool or in the open water, you're going to love it. There's several different designs and you'll be surprised just how much room you have in there. This brand was made by a British surfer, so it's great for all outdoor activities, including surfing, paddleboarding, swimming, and triathlon. The oversized design of the Dry Robe Advance gives you enough space to get change inside while the waterproof outer and super warm interior protects you from whatever the weather throws at you. So check out the link and get yours before your next swim. Okay, let's move on to drafting. It's sometimes a bit of a buzzword, sometimes a mystery to some people. So what's the best position for drafting? On the hip, and most people know this, when somebody shoots past you, the faster somebody goes, the stronger that pull is gonna be. Let's say I'm all out here, I see somebody and I wanna catch him. I can't really get straight to his hip, but where else is there drafting apart from on the hip? Up to around 10 to 20 meters, 
directly behind. That's a very far away. Okay, now I'm directly behind them. So as I go, I'm coming on one side, make sure you're ahead of the hip. Your shoulder is just behind their shoulder. The best way to feel it is actually you catch up, you go head to head, and you fall back into it. So how do you catch a wave? Not from behind the wave, right? You catch it from in front. I'm gonna be expending a lot less energy. So if Christian swimming 130 pace, for me it's gonna feel like 145 pace. So I have 15 seconds of buffer to relax a little bit. Now, just swimming here doesn't work out. I have to decide to swim slower, to relax, to fall into the wave. You have to actually let go. You'll be able to lower your stroke rate a little bit, soften, switch off your legs. You kind of have to start powering down and noticing. If you find you're falling away, two or three strong strokes, get back into position. So as he pushes past his hip, that's when he's gonna accelerate. And as he accelerates, that's where you get a more of a pull. So I want a time, as he pushes past, I roll in, I get closer. I roll in, I get closer, I roll in. And now you're trying to swim and do this, but I'm saving so much energy. If you're getting a good draft, you actually can, you know, really take your time. When I raced 10K, I wasn't the fastest guy out there. So I drafted 9.9 .9 kilometers. And ideally by the end, I was drafting the guy in first so I could try to beat him in the last 100 meters. So the whole race was just jumping from one hip to the next hip to the next hip. And my recommendation would always be keep your legs high, right? Uh, so following that same principle would be just going onto your back. Fly back and then just turn around and go freestyle again. And the great thing, especially when it's buoyant, you don't want to be sinking when you breathe. So a lot of the, the drills I do with some of our guys is we learn to do a double breath in freestyle. So you're so balanced that you can go at any point, you go push off, you just reach, take a breath in, out, still on your side, in, out, and then you can go again. So what you should do open water is every breath shouldn't be the same. As you need more air, you slow down on the, on the breathing stroke, right? Instead of going fast and breathing, you just turn out slowing that down, taking a softer breath. Because you don't have walls, you can't have the same stroke the whole time. The good thing is you own these arms. It's not always a windmill that you're trying to catch your breath in. When you swim as a group, it just creates a completely different environment. And when you're out there looking around waiting for people, the time flies by. I was an international open water swimmer for Ireland, and that's what I loved. It was racing, it was tactics. For me, it was always about competition and the end goal. And now it's changed, right? Now it's kind of my community and community away from home. The great thing as well is, you know, we, we do wait for each other, right? It is more leisurely. We do enjoy it. There are different groups, and that's kind of what we try to do in Swim Tribe Dubai, right? We try to be inclusive. And sometimes people find that, you know, they're worried, right? Uh, someone's gonna have to wait for me. Well, as a top ex-international swimmer, I have to wait for everybody. No matter how fast <laughs> the other guy is, well, somebody has to wait for him, right? That's the important thing to think about. Someone's always waiting for somebody else. So don't worry about it. Swim and enjoy the open water. If you're watching this as well, look us up, find us, and be part of the tribe. <laughs>